Oh, this is a very special night. I'm so, I'm so uh, honored and glad to be here, to be invited up here by the, uh, the people who made this this film project, this contest, uh, and, and by equal exchange. I remember building the church of Stop Shopping, and I. Uh, even, even when I go somewhere by myself, I feel my my 35 voice choir behind me singing. I, I know they were in the poster. <laughs> I wish they were here now. We'll be back to Boston soon enough. Now, my, uh, uh, I'd like to talk about the sponsor for just a moment. I know there are people here who, uh, for whom equal exchange is their family. Uh, there are people here that have been working with the company for, for, for most of the 20 years of its existence. It brought, for many of us, it brought the concept of, of uh, organic fair trade coffee into, uh, into our minds uh, for the first time. If you are what you eat, if you are what you sip in the morning, uh, I am looking at the embodied evocation of equal exchange at this very moment. Praise God. Who drinks that stuff? Amen? Hallelujah. Now they're going off into uh, other of our sophisticated, mild addictions in society, off into coffee, tea, what else? Walnut? Chocolate? Did, did I say chocolate? <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, they have helped our organization, they, they, uh, they were uh, consultants with the, the Walk of Jesus by movie. At one point, before our movie veered into uh, becoming all about the commercialization of Christmas, we were actually going to go to Guatemala with an equal exchange team, and, and uh, but that's perhaps a movie that will be in the future. Amen. They're very important. Uh, they're very important cultural leaders, and I'm, I'm grateful to be here as their guest. There's a, there's a, there's an emergency that we're facing together. These films are a, a way of addressing that emergency. If we're poisoning, poisoning ourselves with the food that we industrially create, If a part of the structural creation of industrial food is that eventually, beyond the, the poisoning, as we're seeing now, many people will not be fed at all. <clears throat> we don't hear about the food riots in the New York Times so much. That is going on right now. We have such an emergency that it's hard to talk about. It's hard to describe to ourselves how serious it is. Something has happened such that our attempt to be a town crier to rise up and say, there's a terrible emergency right now. We've all got to get together and figure this out now, soon. Stop what you're doing. Let's gather. Something has happened to us that makes that very difficult to do. Right now, Everybody is in love with the word change. Change, change, change. All four candidates, and all the thousands of candidates below them in that pyramid of candidates. Change is the mantra. And yet we seem to be waiting. We're using word, the word change like it's a big pause button. Just the moral comfort of saying the word or hearing it. Some of us think that we're 
coming hard for change, but we're actually perhaps in a, a, a vat of clear honey, and we see other people sprinting too, and they're in the same, they're in the same fluid as we are, and we're actually all in slow motion together, and can't tell our perspectives have been broken down. Who knows why? These films attack this pause. Who knows why we're waiting? These, fan these films are many strategies coming at a, a kind of frozen great mass of rhetoric that can't seem to move. Who knows why we can't move? Are we waiting for the election? That's not a good reason. In that case, we'll always be waiting for something. We can't wait for Obama to make history for us. For who knows why, perhaps, perhaps we've been sold products for decades, and the reason that we were supposed to buy these products, ever heard the phrase new and improved? Change may have been in this product life that has been assaulting our senses all these years. And maybe now that we really want to change, to save ourselves. Is that an exaggeration? To save the earth? To save the life systems of which we're a part? We instinctively want to be life-creating life. Instinctively, isn't that true? We have that deep inside. It's an assignment we feel we have as living things to help the life around us. And we can't do that right now. I'm grateful to come up today to talk with you, to experience once again these films with you. Because we must absolutely destroy the art forms, get rid of the labels, Get even get rid of the avant-garde. Get rid of get rid of the things that say they're change. We have to simply rediscover experience now. A tall order. Don't know that I can do it. I only know that when I talk like this, that people's heads start nodding and we start believing, yes, it is that extreme. And yes. We wish we had the culture to communicate it to each other and finally act. You see many breakdowns of forms here, many attempts to come in. People just working for two days, 48 hours. It's beautiful. Distortions of comedy and romance and sci-fi, folk music, <laughs> lots of attempts. I applaud the work of these people. Some of them are here tonight, we'll meet them later. We all have jobs to do together. It takes a kind of faith, a leap past the received wisdom of change that has been introduced to us. A difficult thing to do. We can only do it together. It can be scary, counterintuitive, Change never didn't offend many people. But we must do it, amen? Amen. amen. So you can change the loop here today. Yeah. 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 Yeah.